This is week 8 of the winter trimester of 2018. I had another really good painting week. So on Monday, I look at my painting and I'm looking at the biggest things that I want to do to it that will make the biggest improvement. So looking at my portrait of Brian, the furthest thing from nature is that the key is too low. So when I talk about the key, I'm talking about um, mostly the value key right now. So I can push things up brighter so I can get a brighter range of values that I can be working with in the painting. So that's what I want to do on this painting. And looking at Brian, the brightest area of him is the lower body. His chest is really bright and his shoulders and that arm that uh, goes up with the, the hand then. And so I mix up the colors that I want to be using and I start applying the paint in those areas. And what I'm doing is I'm still building the, the paint up slowly. So I'm not using any medium in my brush. I'm just using the pure paint and I'm dry brushing as well. So dry brushing using just like a little bit of paint on the brush and um, dry brushing that way helps me to really keep control of the drawing easily and be able to adjust the drawing easily. And so working on these areas and correcting the drawing as I go and brightening up that the value range. So Matt has been going around critiquing everyone and he goes to me last and he asked me what I've been doing and I said that I am um, trying to key up the figure and he goes okay let's do that so he takes my palette <laughs> and my palette knife and he takes the the lightest mixture that I've been working with and he takes the palette knife and in the Brian's chest so on the painting it's to the right so the right part of his chest where it is the brightest he takes the palette knife gets paint on it from the my lightest mixture and he just puts that on my painting and kind of spreads it, it out a bit with the palette knife so it's not like a glob or anything, but there's a thick covering of paint now. And he is, just says like, okay, there you go. <laughs> and um, so I've been, like I said, I've been dry brushing to key up the values and to also make sure that I'm keeping control of the, the drawing of everything. But dry brushing, when you're using a little bit of paint, it does, at least going lighter, you need to be using more thick, opaque paint because dry brushing that the lighter colors on, the paint will look grayer and not as bright as the potential that it could be. So um, even though it was a huge difference, and um, perhaps I should have taken a photo to show the difference, but the mixtures that I have on my palette that I apply to my painting look one way when I'm applying them very thinly and then Matt showing me how I can push that range even further just by not making any new mixtures but just the different thickness of the paint that I'm putting on the canvas so using the palette knife and putting it on more thickly is it made a huge difference and quite a, just a huge difference in value. So. Um, it definitely then pushed me, and he was saying don't use the palette knife to use the brushes, he was just making a point. But it definitely um, was showing me that, that I can push this a lot further and a lot faster. I think for this painting, since it's been going really well up to this point, I've been wanting to keep moving slowly and build it up with the dry brushing way. The dry brushing way. But I want to keep you know, moving this painting along also as quickly as I can so I can do as much as I can in the limited time. So I start making sure that that spot that he put on the chest makes sense to everywhere else so that I'm applying the paint thicker around that area. And so the, the thicker areas of paint are definitely the brightest and as they they go to the, the half tones, the darker half tones, the way I'm applying the paint that gets thinner and thinner and thinner. So it, it helps also that I can be using the same mixture and have it look colorful and bright in the lights and then as the the forms in the the half tones are turning turning away and as they get more gray as they do that by just applying the paint a bit thinner I can get that effect so um yeah it was still nice and easy and still my my palette feels fairly simplified and like I have as few mixtures as I need to do everything that I want to do with it Tuesday I go back and 
I work pretty much everything that I worked on. So I'm working on the chest, the shoulders, that arm, and the hand, and to see if I can get it brighter. Because I want to stay working in this area of the painting, since it is the, the brightest area. I want to make sure that I establish the key and I establish that this is as bright as I want it to be, so then when I get this all finished and I like how it looks, value-wise and color-wise, then I can base the head of Brian off of his body. And so today I'm really locking in the key then of this area, locking in the drawing of the arm officially because I feel like the drawing in the chest area is pretty good and comfortable with, and then also working a lot on the drawing of that hand. Wednesday then, I focused mostly on Brian's hand as it's holding that pole, or in my painting he's going to be holding a, or he's holding a message holder. And I do will go, I'll go in other areas too, like go down the arm or the chest if I see anything that I want to fix around there, but I'm really mostly focused on the hand. And the hand, I'm trying to do something with how I apply the paint. I want it to look really, I want it to look really effortless and like I did it in just a few brush strokes. So like as I'm looking at the, the hand, I'm seeing and trying to pick out the, the planes of the hand, like how it's right now at this light, there's, instead of showing the individual or putting too much attention to the individual fingers, I've got first a light plane that goes up like this, and then a dark plane like this and how it connects into the, the shadow past the knuckles onto the arm. Um, I'm trying to get that to all make sense, and then as I brighten it up, I'm then brightening up the individual fingers, trying to still make it make sense with those those bigger planes of the hand, but still picking out that they are individual fingers where the impression looks like they are. And I'm trying to, um, as I move the paint down the fingers, I'm trying to make it look like, if possible, I did it all in as few brush strokes as possible, even though maybe it's like a, a lot of brush work to get the, the forms to move around the finger, but trying to make it look like it's one brush stroke ideally, but um, I'd run out of time and I don't get the, the effect that I want to with the hand, but um, I'm in a really good place for it, color and drawing wise now, and I've brought the hand up a lot. so. I'm going to um, go back to the hand some other day and see if I can get that effect that I'm trying to get. Thursday then, I look at the painting and I'm happy with the key and the colors with the chest, shoulders, arm and hand. So I want to start working on Brian's face now. So, and I'm going to be basing the colors off of, um, or basing the colors and the key value wise off of the chest so I can um, really make sure that that range is established because it's brighter forehead's less bright, and then the lower part of the face is the next brightness down. And so with the forehead, I'm going to try and do what I, today, what I tried to do with his hand, with how I'm laying the paint down and trying to get it to look effortless, and even if it took a ton of brush strokes, hopefully I can manipulate the paint in a certain way that it looks effortless in a way that it looks like it's, things are made up of very few brush strokes. And by the end of the day, I... I end up doing that and I accomplish what I tried to accomplish with the hand and it's something that I've been trying to do since I first started Ravenswood and it's really helped with how I've built up this painting now. So building up the painting, work on the, the drawing first with dry brushing, dry brushing but like slightly thicker as I'm trying to get the colors and values more accurate and now as I'm really trying to push up the key. Um, I'm putting the paint down more thickly, so the colors and the key um, need to be more thickly so it's really showing the true colors of the, those mixtures. So what I do for the forehead is, on my palette, I mix up the mixtures that I had already established days before, and then I see where I want to push it and brighten it up color-wise and value-wise so that I mix up those mixtures as well. So having the mixtures that are already on the canvas, and, and by the way, when I'm making the mixtures that are already on the canvas, I want to be putting them on more thickly, like how I was working on the chest. So 
even though I, I established the colors on Brian's forehead by dry brushing and I want to paint more thickly now, I want to check and make sure that the mixture on my palette is going to look like the right mixture that I already established on the forehead by painting in the new way that's more thicker. So what I do is I, I'll make up the mixture and then I'll put some on my palette knife and then I'll tap it on a spot. So I have, there's a spot on Brian, well, I guess it would be this side, or is it, so there's a spot, the spot on Brian where it's um, up here and it goes down to his, um, down to his temple that is a brighter color and then there's um, a more deeper color over here. So it's really two mixtures that I'm working with and so I'll take the mixture that I think looks like the already established one and then I'll, I'll tap it down on the forehead thickly so I can see and make sure that it's um, going to look the same on the painting how, how I want it to make sure that it blends in and disappears in there even though it's like a thick glob on there so I do that there and I do that for the mixture that's over there um, and, then I, and then I scrape it off so I'm not dealing with like a glob of paint either. But, okay so, so I have those and then working with the new mixtures um, I just start going with putting down big brush strokes that are describing the drawing of the planes of the forehead and seeing how those planes then move down and across the forehead and over the forms and bumps of Brian's specific forehead. I'm trying to pull things together and where planes come together and they unify, I try and make it look like one brushstroke as it something moves this way, it comes around this way. I hope I'm explaining this well. It just something that it's just something that I've been trying to do for so long and I finally um, accomplished it. I'm really proud of myself. And also it also feels like something that didn't just happen by um, like a lucky accident, but it just made so much logical sense as I'm putting those brush strokes down, which is really exciting. Um, so then, um, working with the forehead then, I went down and corrected some areas with the nose, started going down the temple, and then also working on the, the hair and trying to get that to make a little bit more sense and bringing it up value-wise as well. But the big thing today was the forehead and getting that how I got it, which is, uh, really exciting. I feel like doing that and seeing how... I did that and having that make sense and click in a certain way that it did is a really big step for me and not that I want to paint every area in a painting like that because I think there's when there's a lot of variation in a painting that is like oh so wonderful to, to look at because there's so much to look at then but um, now I've unlocked this other technique that I can use and that's really cool. Okay, for my still life now, doing the same thing that I've been doing for the portrait painting where I'm trying to key things up. So working with the key on my still life, the same with trying to bring up the values and make the values brighter, but also working on the color as well. So there's a lot of different colors in the still life. There's that bright blue jar of pigment, the white jar of pigment, or it's actually rabbit skin glue, um, that label that's really yellow, there's a different color of yellow that's the papers, the red that is in the curtain, or the rug thing that's like the, the back wall, and um, trying to get all those things working together, but also like spreading the color apart as much as possible so like that blue, the red, and the, the yellow can be um, in the range that, are, that, that I want it to be. And so once I feel like I'm getting things pretty, oh, another thing that I should say is to really establish the range, there's these um, spots of light on the, the glass bottles. And so there's one spot that's on the, the middle right, white rabbit skin glue bottle that has the strongest highlight. So I just took my palette knife and just put a dot where that highlight is and like bing i can see then that that's the, the the full range that's as white and as bright as i can get so that's really helpful um mentally 
thinking about how I want to be arranging this painting from that like what I've established my range because I have black on the canvas and I have that high highlight the highest highlight so I can see then how I need to be arranging the values that are in between that so I can get the the range of values to look um, how I want them to. So after establishing all that, so I want to go back to working in the darks now and Matt has been telling me to really push the shadows to be unified all over the entire painting. So the shadows that are on the glass jars, that are on the table, the books, papers, everything to try and make it look like it's one thing. And so doing this, I'm also correcting the drawing as well because as I've pushed things brighter and I'm pushing things darker, it makes things look different size of shape as darker things make things look smaller, brighter things make things look bigger. So I'm seeing where I thought things were more accurate before, but just as I'm pushing the painting along, I can see um, little discrepancies that I want to fix. So just going around the shadow shape and trying to make it, yeah, look like one shadow shape and like everything is connected and unified, but also shows that the variation that is in the shadow as well, but making sure that it's all unified so the attention then should be brought to the light shape instead of the shadow shape. All right, that's that for this week's Atelier Diary. Also, I just got this in the mail. This is Cesar Santos's new DVD, Secrets of Figure Painting. Um, really excited to start watching this. So I will, after I watch it, I'll take notes during it and put up a video giving it a review.